This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Monday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news the economies of most major powers are in good shape and their companies are prospering. But for those who follow such things we should note that President Biden has decided not to run in the presidential election in November stepping aside. The race for the Democratic nomination is now open at their convention in Chicago, starting on Tuesday, August 20th, New Zealand time, even though Biden endorsed Kamala Harris. Well before then, and ahead this week, we will get some early PMIs for July released for many key economies. Although there are no major June CPIs due for release, the US's important PCE inflation data is due on Saturday, New Zealand time, and that will be keenly awaited. The U.S. will also release its first estimate of second quarter GDP growth on Friday and markets expect real growth there to be 2% from the first quarter. Good recent data might well see it above that. And Canada is reviewing its policy rate on Thursday and markets now expect a 25 basis point cut to 4.5%. And China is set to announce its policy interest rate decision this week and it should be releasing its foreign direct investment update soon both possibly later today. Over the weekend, the big overnight news was that a faulty channel file from CrowdStrike took down Windows computers everywhere, including in New Zealand. Outages were widespread, including for many bank services. It was a spectacular own goal and not a malicious strike. We have more details on our site and our review shows how you can recover if you were affected. But be careful. Within hours, scammers had launched new domains hoping to trick users into response scams. CrowdStrike has made its name fixing tech problems. Now it has caused a doozy. The echoes are lingering and may do for some time yet. And the situation isn't going to do anything for the tech company valuations generally. The $13 billion CrowdStrike share price was down 11% on Friday alone, down 18% for the week. Interestingly, China seems to have escaped the issue largely due to its self-sufficiency policies, but it has hit Hong Kong. A new research note by the New York Fed is pointing out that since the GFC, American factory productivity improvements have stalled. Tech has been no saviour to this sector. Prior to that, large firms built innovative advances. But since, even the leading firms haven't got productivity gains. They call the change a mystery. Even shifting low-wage production offshore didn't have the effect of raising productivity. Nor competition, it seems. And all this has come as their employed workforce hit record highs. In Canada, their expected May retreat in retail sales after the strong April came in deeper than expected. If it wasn't for good car sales, it would have been much worse. June is expected to be 0.3% lower too. Now their year-on-year gain is only 1%, much less than their inflation of 2.7%. And Canadian producer prices rose 2.8% in the year to June, the same as for the year to May. Japanese inflation stayed at 2.8% in June, well above their central bank's upper target range. It has been consistently above 2% since April 2022. Food prices rose 3.6% in June, although that was lower than the May 4.1% rate. Energy prices were up 2.4%, but that is somewhat artificially high because fuel subsidies ended in May. These levels are marginally lower than analyst expectations. And China has ended its internal policy meetings, the third plenum. As expected, little real economic reform seems to have been on their agenda. Just more of a security as everything attitude, more excessive adverbs, and a seeming turn inward. Those hoping for reform and opening up will have been disappointed. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now at 4.24% and unchanged from Saturday. On Wall Street, earnings season will hit a crescendo this week, with over 30 companies boasting market caps exceeding $100 billion are set to unveil their second quarter financial reports. So far, only one in seven S&P 500 companies have reported second quarter results, but they have been strong. Of those, most are reporting earnings growth, and more than anticipated by analysts. 
The price of gold will start today up $3 from Saturday at $2,401 an ounce after Friday night's big drop. And oil prices are holding lower, just on seventy-eight fifty a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price just under eighty-two dollars a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today a little change at sixty point one US cents, but more than one cent lower over the past week. Against the Aussie was still at eighty-nine point nine Australian cents, against the Euro was still at fifty-five point two Euro cents. That all means our trade weighted index starts today at sixty-nine and down ninety basis points for the week. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $66,720 and up a minus 0.3% from Saturday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been low, and just on plus or minus 0.8%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes, and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. <laughs>